Hey everybody, it's FLF here, back for another Light of Babylon, and today we're going to be wrapping up, for now, our dive into Kanye West. So if you haven't seen part one and part two, where I pretty much go through the history of Kanye West and his project, Jesus is King, click the card right there to, to be able to watch that. But this is going to be the capstone, this is going to be the final video in this particular series of videos, where we, we look into Kanye West and the journey of his faith. Now, while this has been exciting and interesting, one of the things that I try to do throughout each one of these videos is give you the critical take on Kanye, pre-Jesus is King, and also the critical take on Kanye West and his very real, what I believe, faith during his Jesus is King experience. So with that being said, what we're gonna do in this video is look over the last few months and also look over probably one of the more controversial albums for Christians and non-Christians alike, which is Donda. So between Jesus is King and Donda, there's probably a lot that's happened that might be worth highlighting. I think the first thing, probably the biggest thing that happened is that Kanye West ran for president. If anyone recalls, after Jesus is King came out, did his petition to run for president, ran as an independent, um, was able to get about 48,000 votes, something like that across the country to become president. Um, and this was during the Trump-Biden uh, Republican Democrat um, uh, election cycle where, where we had these two big forces competing in Kanye West kind of elbowing his way in there alongside Gary Johnson and some other folks. Right after that, Kanye West also sealed the deal with Gap and the Yeezy brand, which was rumored to be millions, I'm sorry, billions and billions of dollars. And then he transitioned kind of out of the spotlight for a little while to work on some different things. We had gotten teased Donda a few times as a project, um, different songs that had come out, kind of in little promotional social media clips, but nothing was solidified, nothing was for sure. And then finally, Seemingly out of nowhere, as Kanye West does, Donda was announced with a number of different promotional materials, and then the rollout began for this actual album. Now, we talked in part one about how his mother actually passed away, how uh, Donda, Donda West actually passed away, was, was the result of a surgery, a botch surgery, and she died pretty suddenly, right? This wasn't, she wasn't older, we weren't expecting it, Kanye certainly wasn't expecting his mother to pass away. So his mother passed away very suddenly, so this album, um, is kind of a tribute album to her, and I think that was a cool idea when I first heard about it. Nothing really stands out to me, there's nothing scriptural that talks about, um, you know, not honoring the dead, right? Um, I think I think someone might make a stretch and talk about making markings on your flesh, or this could be seen as some sort of worship, but that wasn't the impression I got, at least at first, about the entire project, right? The concept and the name of it. It's a tribute to his mother, um, it's gonna be called that, named after her, awesome stuff, powerful stuff. Um, and then there were some things that started happening essentially that kind of perked my ears up to say, okay, are we sliding back into the old Kanye or, the, or is this the, the Kanye West that's been on fire for Christ? So the first album artwork that was actually rolled out was created by Luis Bourgeois. Now Luis is an artist that Kanye West has spoken about previously and even more recently saying he's a big fan of this particular artist. But this artist is also very infamously famous with the occult elite most notably Tony Podesta, and other high-profile politicians and celebrities. Her catalog features disturbing imagery, feigning the human form, and including many creepy, unrealistic, super-realistic designs, bodies getting stitched together, faces, dead corpses, a bunch of really bizarre and weird things. Now, as far as me diving into that, I, I don't have the time, but I think it's worthwhile noting who her audience is, who she caters to, and the fact that she designed a piece specifically for uh, Tony Podesta as well. If you don't know who Tony Podesta is, look into it, um, and then you can comment below on uh, what you found. Leading up to the release, there were also three different listening parties, each that had their own kind of unique theme. Now, I've heard a lot of people read into this as well, a lot of different things. So I wanna go through each one of the listening parties and kind of pull out what I'm noticing, the things that I'm seeing, and my take on it coming from a Christian standpoint, right? This might be totally different from a non-Christian standpoint, but I'm using the Bible as a reference point as always in every single one of my videos. And then also with Kanye West uh, professing Christianity and some of the things that he does are kind of interesting. I think it also might be an opportunity to uh, look at where maybe he's coming from. So the first listening party, which is the one I had initially watched when I heard about it coming out, Kanye West is dressed in all red. He's in the middle of the stadium, nothing else around him. The songs are playing and he's more or less kind of performing the songs with this mask on. Um, again, nothing really stood out to me, made me uncomfortable, nothing like that. But the first thing that, that kind of kicked it off was that the album had cursing on it. There were curse words on the actual project. So I'm in the listening party, I hear curse words 
and immediately I check out. I'm like, okay, well, this is not what I need. It's not what I expect. I think when I look at the grand scheme of things, curse words in so many ways are not consequential. And for me to say I never use them in my private life, it would not be accurate. But it's more about Kanye West and his influence and his ability to decide with the artist he's working with, we're not doing this, with the engineer, we're not releasing it this way, and even with the label itself. He has the power and ability to, to not release content that's gonna contain curse words. So if you have that ability, you have that foresight, you've given your life to Christ, why are there curse words? To me, initially, this was kind of a little bit jarring because Jesus is King was a clean album, not a edited album, not a clean version of the album, but a totally clean album. So hearing curse words on it definitely took me back a little bit. Another thing that stood out is when the actual listening party ended, Kanye West was then pulled up into the sky and suspended in the middle of the stadium with lights all shining around, almost like he was being called up to heaven is kind of what it looked like. Um, this in, in it of itself didn't really catch my attention, but the fact that it looks so similar to the Yeezus cover promos for his tour that came out, when his, his Yeezus tour posters is literally Kanye West levitating with light surrounding him as he's being pulled into the air. And this was that same album, if you remember from video one, where I talk about how Kanye West was saying that he is God, he is Jesus, i.e. Jesus Yeezus. So of course, in typical Kanye fashion, this listening party does not precede the release of the project. He has a second listening party. Again, he's at the Mercedes-Benz uh, Stadium. He stays there for multiple, multiple uh, days, doesn't leave there. He's doing all his mixing, even some tracking and recording, it looks like, in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And then he has a second listening party. The second listening party, again, he's in the middle of the stadium, just like with a blow-up mattress, some weights, some different things, and he's all dressed in black and has a black uh, mask on. One of the things that was interesting during this this season of his uh, uh, living in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium, there was a lot of weird things, like him wearing a Balenciaga jacket with spikes and just staring at the camera, or there being a countdown timer. And I think it's probably easy for plenty of people, it's probably someone who's already done it that reads into it, oh, this is a, a countdown timer while he's in purgatory or he's in hell or whatever the case is. Who knows? I really doubt that's the case though. Being an artist and kind of seeing how Kanye's moved in the past, I think he kind of just flies off the seat of his pants sometimes and just creates what feels right in the moment. Now, whether that's being led by the Holy Spirit or not is a totally different discussion because when I'm seeing these listening parties and I'm seeing the promo around them, a lot of the times I felt this isn't Holy Spirit led. And especially hearing the first listening party with the cursing, I don't think that was a Holy Spirit led decision. So when I'm seeing the artwork and what he's doing, I think he's really more trying to capture an energy or a mood. It's like, I'm working hard, I'm grinding it out, I'm here to stay, yada, yada, yada. I don't think there's anything inherently evil about it, but I don't feel that it's Holy Spirit led. So you can kind of read into that what you want. So second listening party is done, pretty much very similar to the first listening party, some new tracks, some new features. And then we fast forward to listening party number three, which is the biggest listening party, which was the most iconic listening party. And this actually led into the album being released pretty soon after as well. So for this listening party, what Kanye was actually did in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium is recreate his childhood home in the middle of the stadium. So literally the old house that he grew up in was recreated in the middle of the stadium, put up on a hill, and then surrounded with fireworks, special effects, everything like that. What's also interesting is that he turned that particular house into a church. There's a uh, a cross on the top of the church itself as well. So again, kind of an interesting concept here. You know, it's like, in my opinion, at that time, he's kind of abandoned some of his Christian roots. He's kind of abandoned maybe what Jesus is King was all about. And he's coming back with this particular um, look and feel, which is kind of an interesting take, right? Is he saying that his childhood home, what his mother had given him is now the, the, the cornerstone of his faith in some way that his mother created a church, a home church that he would grow up in or a church that was a home that he would grow up in. Who knows? These are all things I'm reading into, but nothing that can be clearly documented and said, oh, this is why he did this. The more interesting things come along a little bit later. So Kanye West again with the mask on outside the house as the, the listening party is going on and he invites a lot of people. Now, the two most notable guests that were invited were one was Marilyn Manson and the other was DaBaby. Now, this is probably really interesting to me because Marilyn Manson and DaBaby have both recently, in that point in time, 
been involved in some pretty serious controversies, right? Marilyn Manson specifically had been kind of a victim of a Me Too accusation, which I do believe, I do believe what this woman is saying, but essentially that Marilyn Manson had sexually abused her, sexually assaulted her multiple times years ago, and now uh, she was coming out and kind of exposing him. And I think Marilyn Manson was working on an album that he was gonna release as well. Right alongside him is the baby who the baby had really run into some controversy on some comments that he made that were offensive to the LGBTQIA plus community. Now, why would Kanye West get these two individuals who are in the spotlight in a negative way and bring them with him on this particular listening party? Now, mind you, Marilyn Manson, given his history, always made very evil, satanic music, met with the founder of the satanic church at that time. Obviously not a Christian. The baby, again, probably not a Christian for that for that most part. But it's just interesting that he invited them to the listening party and then also put them on his album. They were actually on his album on a song called Jail. So when I see this initially, and I'm seeing everything else going into it, because Kanye West did remove the cursing, he's making this building a church. I'm like, okay, maybe there's the hand of the spirit somewhere in here, right? And I'm reminded of Jesus on the cross with the thieves on either side of him. In the middle of being accused as a criminal, he had two other criminals on the side of him and repentance and salvation was available to them, just like it's available to every single one of us. Now, is that what Kanye West was trying to communicate? I don't know. But again, these are just things that you can acknowledge and kind of point out. As the listening party progressed, the inside of the house went on fire. Kanye West came out, he was on fire, he gets put out. He does a mock wedding with Kim Kardashian. They've since been divorced. Maybe this was an attempt to kind of bring them back together. But a lot of just weird things, a lot of things I really don't get. You know, the inside of the house going on fire and then him coming out on fire, I don't understand that. I don't think it has anything to do with him being in hell. I don't think it has anything to do with him being in purgatory. I think it's just weird. I think if we were to get inside the brain of Kanye West, it would make perfect sense. But I think it's just a weird thing to do. Um, I don't, I, I really, truly, if someone can tell me otherwise and give evidence and a reasonable explanation, I'm all for it. But I really don't think it was anything occultic. I really don't think it was anything super evil. The one thing I will point out though is that the merchandise around the event as well, uh, one of the t-shirts that came out was a cross in the middle of a six star, pen, not, not pentagram, hexagram. Is that her? Yeah, a six star hexagram. And this resembled very closely something called theosophy. So theosophy is pretty much summarized in this. Any number of philosophies maintaining that a knowledge of God may be achieved through spiritual ecstasy, direct intu intuition, or special individual relations, especially the movement uh, is founded in 1875. And if you look at these two images side by side, you can see that the t-shirt borrows the same kind of design, format, and style as it does from Theosophy. Now, again, is Kanye West involved in every single creation of every single piece of his merchandise? Probably not, but another thing to note that's very interesting and definitely has an occultic tie to it. Now, with all that being said, let's dive into the actual album Donda itself. Full disclosure here as I go into this, I have not listened to this album all the way through. I've kind of checked out some songs. I don't intend to listen to this album all the way through. And I don't intend to give you an unbiased, totally fair um, review of this album in its entirety as a piece of artwork, right? What I'm attempting to do here is give you some of the themes, some of the things that are sticking out, and really you can make a decision on your own if it's something you should listen to. I can tell you that when I first put it on, after like three songs into it, I didn't feel it was led by the spirit. and um, I could be wrong, but I didn't feel that at all the first three songs that I listened to. Maybe there's some songs that are like that. With that being said though, I think we have to be very diligent in guarding our hearts and our minds with the content that we consume. And I don't think anyone who says they're a Christian should immediately win a spot on our playlist. We should be very diligent about the things that we listen to and be very aware of what we're putting into our body. In the same way I feel bit like that about food, I feel like that about film and media, I guard it with my children, I guard it with myself. Why wouldn't we do the same thing for music? So just give that disclaimer right there. The first thing that stands out right when you turn on the album is there's this intro where Selena Johnson is repeating Donda, 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 over and over and over again. Very uncomfortable to listen to. And even going into the album, I was excited to listen to the album. That was what I was greeted with and my excitement immediately went away. I was immediately a little bit like, I something's off here, right? Um, now, going back and kind of revisiting it, 
revisiting uh, an interview specifically that Selena Johnson had where she talks about this, she says that she came in to do some singing and then the result of what Kanye West wanted her to do was something that was gonna be healing, right? Um, and I'll play that clip right now. And he told me in the studio after I sang on a song, you know, that I thought was what I was really supposed to do, he told me that he wanted the, the album to have some type of healing component. And so I started saying, Donda, Donda. I said, if you say it over and over again, it sounds like a meditative chant. Now, if you know anything about the New Age movement, they do have a belief that chants um, and repetitive uh, singing does have healing abilities within it. This is a belief common in the New Age movement where in Eastern religions, where they believe that the chant or meditative chants of these words, of these concepts have healing ability. So Selena Johnson is saying that it's not satanic and maybe directly not satanic, but the idea is pulled from these other pagan religions that believe that this sort of approach is a healing, beneficial, powerful one. So right off the bat, a meditative chant to open up the project with the name of his mother to open up the project something seems off about that right um when you also when you also look at the features that are actually on the project a number of names stand out right so marilyn manson being one given his history what he's done previously playboy cardi whose most recent album at the very beginning of 2021 i covered and talked about all the merchandise that he came out all the very sacrilegious anti-christian merchandise that he came out with um, again very um very blatant about this approach why would he be on this project right j electronica not to say that Jay Electronica has done anything specifically occultic or wicked or evil, but he is a, an outspoken uh, Muslim, professor of the Muslim faith, and I believe like even a five percenter. Again, not to say that we shouldn't work with people of different faiths, but just something interesting to point out. And then we also have The Weeknd as well, who's been one of the most profound advocates for pushing occultic images and messaging to his audience for years and years now. Now this is again, me just zooming out of the 10,000 foot view. When we look at how uh, Jerusalem was rebuilt by Nehemiah during the time of Darius, if you read this, you, if you wanna read this, you can read this in the Old Testament, the book of Nehemiah, the book of Ezra, details the entire process. One of the things that Nehemiah was very adamant about when rebuilding Jerusalem is that no one else aside from the Israelites or the Jews could rebuild their city. He was very adamant about this. And the reason being is because Nehemiah knew that if they partook in the rebuild, they would have some ownership of it. They would have some involvement with it. And when you look historically through the Old Testament, the main times that Israel got in trouble or, you know, uh, strayed from God is when they would intermingle with these other nations, when they would intermarry with these other nations, when they would take their gods, when they would take their, um, their possessions and when they would do commerce with them. So the idea that you're gonna bring people into your project and it's not going to affect, I think is short-sighted on the on the part of Kanye West. I think there's an element of bring, bringing people into your house to do the work that God has called you to do. And I also think there's an element of guarding the work that God has given you from outside influences and people who could take it their own way. Now, one person I didn't mention here was Jay-Z, but Jay-Z is another big component of occult imaging and messaging and has you know come out and basically said he is a freemason and been caught doing multiple things and he, he made a song called freemason where he says i'm not a freemason i said i'm amazing whatever okay um the fact is these features despite the personal relationships despite the conversations had are going to influence the project in one specific way or another and i don't think it's going to again lead people to the Holy Spirit closer as a result of having these features on the project itself. Another kind of interesting thing, maybe a weird thing, is that the album cover for Donda ended up being black. And there was a push with this kind of all blocked out profile picture that followers would have. If you put the blacked out profile picture, Kanye West would follow you. If you put the blacked out profile picture, that would show that you're helping promote the album. And a lot of people did it. A lot of people are still doing it. I don't get it. I don't understand why. I didn't think the album was that great anyways, but a lot of Christians are doing it. And I'm like, again, are you really sure what you're promoting and what you're kind of pushing out there? Kim Kardashian went to the Met Gala in a couple of different outfits where almost looked kind of like BDSM. She was totally blacked out herself, her head, her face. She was wearing a mask, zipper over her face, zipper over her eyes. Uh, again, when I see her outfits, I, I'm i not, it's not spirit led. I, I don't see that outfit. I'm like, oh, wow, that's a really great representation of Christ. That is a 
a Holy Spirit led decision to, to put that on. That's not the, the vibe I'm getting. That's not the conclusion I'm reaching when watching that or seeing that. So why would it be done? Simply put, because it's not led by the spirit. And by simply put, because it's not led by the spirit. So when you think about the entire project, the overall experience, what are the characteristics, right? Do we have vanity? Do we have pride? Do we have humility? Do we have kindness? Do we have grace? Do we have love? Do we have anger? Do we have selfishness? What are the characteristics of the project? Now, again, as someone who hasn't listened through it all the way through, there might be some of the good mixed in with the bad. But I feel overall just at a 10,000 foot view from what I've heard, from what I've seen, from the influences that I've been able to witness, from the from the walk of Kanye West, which we're going to cover in a little bit. I don't think that we're veering towards something that's being led by the Holy Spirit 100% at the very least. And I'm not saying that every single thing that anybody does is going to be led by the Holy Spirit 100%, but at least 90%, at least 80%, right? This idea of being a Christian is not just a... I'm gonna go to church once a week. It is an all-encompassing journey with Christ, and it's an all-encompassing submission to the Holy Spirit in your life around your decisions. The body is a temple where the Holy Spirit dwells. So if it's dwelling within us, we either have to war against it or war against our flesh. And Paul talks about this a lot um, and makes it very clear that my flesh does what I don't want it to do, and it wars against the law. And we are going to be wrestling with this human body, this sinful nature for our entire lives. So I'm not looking to Kanye West as the beacon of perfection. But what I can say is that decisions can be made, conviction can lead out before creativity. And in someone's shoes like Kanye West who has the influence, who has the profound ability to impact so many people, he can literally make all these decisions and still be very successful in his own right. And I think when we see stories like, for example, with Solomon, King Solomon, one of the mistakes that Solomon made is that once he got married, he had multiple concubines and they wanted their own gods to worship. So he would build them these altars for these gods and he would accommodate these uh, concubines and these wives that he was marrying. And ultimately that, that uh, accommodation turned to compromise. And you had one of the greatest kingdoms in all of the world immediately become overtaken by harlotry and the hand of God removed from it so many times throughout history. This reminds me of a Bible verse that I want to read through and um, kind of reflect on how, as we go into the, the life of Kanye West since then, how maybe this has impacted um, what he's been doing and how he's been living. So 1 John 2.16, For all of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Again, this pursuit of the will of God is not just something uh, superficial, on the surface level, it can only be determined by the actions you take, but it's an overall lifestyle. And this world as it's fading away is insignificant. You know, after we are dead and in the ground, in 200, 300, let's say, let's say we have thousands of years left on this earth, Thousands of years, we will be forgotten and it'll be inconsequential. But the only thing that will be lasting is our eternity after we've gone and passed into the next. So what's happened since Donda has come out? Well, a few things have happened. And I think these things are, are somewhat telling of the journey that Kanye West is on. So I, I, I want to cover everything. I want to highlight everything I possibly can. One is that Kanye West and Justin Bieber had a church service where they invited Marilyn Manson and prayed over Marilyn Manson. And I... I believe Marilyn Manson is even saying, repeating the prayer with them, that Jesus Christ come over me, Jesus Christ is Lord. I think that's a pretty powerful, pretty awesome moment in time. I think his efforts, you know, who knows what Marilyn Manson is going through, but I think the efforts of Kanye West are being hindered by other decisions in his life. And I think there could be a huge outpouring, but again, that is an incredible moment. We don't want to take that away, right? Another thing that's happening right now, or might already be done, is that Kim and Kanye, uh, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West are actually separating and they're divorcing. They decided they want to co-parent their children. Since then, Kim has, I guess, taken on a boyfriend of Pete Davidson. Kanye West has been with multiple women. He's been seen with multiple women going out, multiple women on the balcony. Uh, a new girlfriend that he surprised with a, a closet full of clothing. And again, like when we look at just <laughs> biblically, it, are these things that he should be doing in the public eye or doing it all? And I would say the answer is no. I, I would say he's acting in a way that's a little bit short-sighted. Um, Kanye West went on Drink Champs 
got drunk, got high on the interview, started wiling on everybody, demonstrated a lot of bad business practices, spoke poorly about people. And as we're kind of just seeing these different things that keep happening over and over and over, again, I, I want to point to something else, right? I want to point to another scripture, which is Galatians 5, 22 through 24. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. And those who have and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Again, I just keep reiterating this because I want to make it very clear. Nobody saying Kanye West has to be perfect or there's an expectation that he should be perfect. We all backslide. We all have challenges and struggles. I struggle with things every single day. So does my wife. So do my kids. My daughter. I, I can see it now that she's coming into this, this uh, realization of a sinful nature. And she's having a battle with it herself. Even at four years old. So... When we look at the grand scope of things, no one's expecting a, perf a perfect Kanye that doesn't misstep, doesn't make anything wrong. But I think we also have to acknowledge when someone has kind of gone away off of that, that narrow path and has drifted and we need to pull them back in with a kind, loving and gentle rebuke. I don't know who Kanye West surrounds himself with, but whoever is around him as a Christian or as a leader in his life, we should be praying for Kanye and those people, that God can bring them together, allow the conversations that need to happen, allow the pride or vanity or lack of humility that might play Kanye, Kanye's heart in that moment to be softened, that he could hear the words that these people are gonna to speak to him and that he could reflect on his actions and his decisions and veer back onto that narrow path to draw closer to Christ. Right now, the world wants to reclaim him. The world wants to shower him with praise and love and attention and work with him. And they, they want more music. They want more music like the old Kanye. And they want to pull him back into the fold with everything else that's going on. And even the fact that he released Donna to be a clean album, I could imagine people on the next album saying, oh, well, you could release a clean version for people who want to listen, right? But let's have our main version, right? Small compromises, or let me let me uh, rephrase that. Lukewarmness often manifests as smell lukewarmness often manifests itself through small compromises and when we make when we give an inch give an inch give an inch before we know it we've given a mile and i think that same thing is going to be true here so as we're looking at the entire life legacy and history of kanye west a couple things i want to do first let's pray for him let's as a community as a people pray for him because i assure you he needs prayer now more than ever Let's also acknowledge that he's on a journey, that where he's at today might not be where he's at in a few months, might not be where he's at in a year. Let's also acknowledge that he is a son of the Most High God, and he has given his life to Jesus Christ. Now, he might he might lose that salvation, because I don't believe once saved, always saved. He might turn so far away from it that God removes his hand from him. But right now, we don't know. It's not apparent. So let's continue to pray for him and trust that God is working on his heart and his life. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. If, if you know someone who might receive a blessing from this, please share it out with them. And uh, yeah, let's continue to light up Babylon. Again, I'm FLF. God bless and have a great day.